Good deal. Well, we're going to pray, and then Mr. Jackson's going to come up. So if you guys want to join me, let's bow our heads and let's go ahead and pray. God, thank you so much for your presence in this place tonight, Lord. Thank you for uh, the body of Christ, God. Thank you for each person here, God. I pray that you would bless them, Lord. Uh, refresh them, Lord. Thank you that we are already blessed because we are your sons and daughters, God. And I just pray that you would just bless us uh, even more so tonight, God, as your word says, that our cup would overflow, Lord, that uh, we would be empowered to continue out this week. Uh, God, thank you in your word that it says that our help comes from you, Lord, that you, you watch over our coming and our going. God, I pray over every prayer request, every need, spoken, unspoken, everything represented in the room tonight, God. Would you meet those according to your word, God? We have the faith to believe those. Uh, whether it's sickness, God, we pray for complete healing. God, any situation, God, we pray for your will, perfect will to be done. And God, we pray for Jackson as he comes to bring the word. God, thank you that you've already anointed him. You've given him a word to speak to our hearts. God, thank you that your word is alive and active, God. We can learn everything new again. We can read a passage many times over, God, but Holy Spirit, you speak to our hearts uniquely every time. So God, we give you all the praise tonight. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you guys Amen. welcome Jackson tonight? All right. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, I'm thankful to be here. I'm glad that y'all are willing to listen to a young man like myself. Um, but what I want to talk about tonight is just having and living a lifestyle of gratitude. And so I want to start off by telling you about something that's recently happened in my life um, that was pretty incredible, how the Lord really provided um, so I guess a few weeks ago, I had kind of been in a car dilemma. Um, I had this Honda Accord, but it kind of had a few issues and I was just putting a bunch of money into it. And so we have some friends here at the church that have a car lot up the street. And so I'd asked them if they could, you know, maybe sell it for me. And he said, yeah, of course we can get it sold because, um, you know, people like Hondas. And it was something that was definitely fixable. And so he said, you know, it won't be an issue to get sold, um, but finding a car in this market that is used and reasonably priced is very difficult. And so that was kind of my struggle with trying to find a vehicle, but Robert Spivey, he was going to help me out. He was going to make sure that we were able to sell the car and put that money into another one. Um, but there was still going to be some more for me to pay. I was probably going to have to come out of pocket some, probably still going to have to finance. And that created a little bit of nervousness in my life. And so a few things happened in between that, but between cars, I was using my grandmother's vehicle. It was this old Forerunner. And she had told me, hey, you know, I really need you to go get the brakes done. So then I didn't have the forerunner to drive anymore. And so she has a sister who's my great aunt, and her husband had passed away a few years ago. And so he had this old, it wasn't old, it was a Nissan Frontier. It was a nice truck, great condition. It was red, just beautiful vehicle. And so I asked her, I said, would you mind if I use it for a couple weeks while I'm still in between cars? And she said, of course, just come pick it up whenever and use it for how long you need. And so I go to pick it up on this Sunday evening, and I get there, and she says, if you want it at church. Wow. And she gives me, that's what I said. I <laughs> and so she gives me this great truck. It's in great condition. She gives it to me completely for free. But what was even more impactful for me was that was on a Sunday evening. And that morning was the message that Pastor Leslie preached about turning around our finances. And he talked about when we sow into the kingdom, when we're consistent with our giving, when we're faithful, God provides. And he did that literally six hours later that day. It was incredible. And so not only did I get a vehicle completely for free, I didn't even have to pay a lot to register at the DMV. It was cheaper because it was gifted to me. I also got to sell my Honda Accord and keep all the proceeds. So God just completely blessed me. And I'm thankful that there were people in my life, right, that guided me and told me, Jackson, you have to prioritize a lifestyle of giving. You have to continue to sow into the kingdom because God will provide for you. I'm thankful that there were people in my life that taught me that. And that it was able, it was something that I was able to do because now I feel like I'm raking the benefits of it. I was just overwhelmed with gratitude, as I'm sure you can imagine. So I was telling everyone about this. I was telling them about this incredible thing that happened in my life. And I told all my family members, all my friends, and there were some people that I work with at Publix. And I was telling them about it. And there's this one gentleman that comes in all the time. Uh, his name is Mr. Peter. He's an older guy, but he's just, he's very a business minded, but a very generous person. And he's someone that I know is just consistent with their giving. He's just someone that I really admire in that aspect. And I told him about uh, this thing that happened. I said, Peter, I am just so overwhelmed with gratitude. And he looks at me and he says, isn't it such a great way to live? And it hit me right in the chest. I got so convicted because here I am just overwhelmed with gratitude, like I said, in this moment because God had provided this vehicle. But the truth is throughout my entire life, God has provided so much more than a truck. 
He's provided so much more than the sale of a vehicle. He has given me so much more in Christ. We need to live a lifestyle of gratitude, not just in these moments. And so that's what I want to talk about first today. I think no better season. With Thanksgiving coming up, this is a time for us to remind ourselves of everything we have to be thankful for. But what I first want to talk about today is living with gratitude despite circumstance. See, I think it's easy to have gratitude in a moment where God really blesses us. But when God really provides, well, maybe we get a new job or maybe we get a new opportunity. But what about when things aren't going well? What about when there's adversity and the, we feel like the walls are caving in and there's pressure on us? What does it mean to have gratitude in those moments? And so I think there's so many different examples throughout the scripture of people that had gratitude in times where it, it doesn't really make sense to have gratitude. And me and Pastor Leslie were talking today, and he was sharing with me about a few messages he was planning on preaching at this revival he's going to. And he was telling me about the story of Job and just reminding me about how in the midst of everything he was going through, he was still thanking God for what he had. Because there was a time where his kids had been killed, he didn't have any more farm animals, but he was still thanking God for his wife. And he had this sense of gratefulness despite what he was going through. And I also think of Daniel. Daniel 6, we all know the story of Daniel and the lions, and it's one we've been taught from a young age, and I even heard some people over here talking about Daniel earlier in the series. I think that's confirmation right there. Amen? <laughs> but we see in Daniel 6 that Daniel, he was a high official in uh, Darius' kingdom. And so this scripture says in chapter 6, verse 3, Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials. Because an excellent spirit was in him. I think that's so great. He had an excellent spirit that was in him. And because of that, he was exalted higher because he, was, he had the spirit of God. And so we see Daniel, he has this high ranking, but there were a lot of other people that were officials as well that got jealous. And so they were conspiring of how they could come against David, or I'm sorry, Daniel. And they couldn't figure out anything that they could bring against him because he was blameless. He didn't have any fault. And so eventually they say that, if we can find some way to come against him because of his God. So they come to the king and they tell him that he needs to create this ordinance, that he needs to create this law. And they said that whoever makes any petition to God or any man for 30 days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. And so Daniel heard about this. It says in verse 10, when Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where the windows in his upper chamber opened toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he had done previously. And see, Daniel was someone that throughout his life he had prioritized getting before God, having that intimacy with him, and telling God how thankful he was. But what's so crazy to me is when he knows that this document has been signed, he knows he's getting set up, he still doesn't waver. He still continues to go into his chambers and pray before his God. And I think that's the type of lifestyle we need to live, that despite what we're going through, we can have thanksgiving before God. Because the truth is we serve a powerful and mighty God that is worthy of our thanksgiving despite what's going on here. Because this world, this life, is so short. When we think about the, the life of eternity, right, our time here on earth is just a fraction of it. Because after the 70, 80, 90 years of the Lord's heirs, it's forever and ever and ever. And I think we get so, we get so dwelt up with whatever's happening here, it's like we can't let this consume our mind. We need to be thankful that we have treasures up in heaven that are going to last eternity. Amen. I think another thing we need to be grateful for is that we serve a God that, despite what we're going through, right, he can turn a situation around. I love the story of Joseph. He's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. And we see Joseph, he was his, his father's favorite son, and so this created some jealousy between him and his brothers. And so he's betrayed by his own family. He's sold into slavery. He's then uh, accused of rape and thrown into prison. And then somehow he becomes the second most powerful person in Egypt. And at the end of this, his family, they come back to him because there's a famine in the land. And in Genesis 50, 20, this is one of my favorite scriptures. He looks at his family and he says, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. To bring about the saving of many lives on this day. We serve a God that no matter what we're going through, he can turn it around. We serve a God that he can bring the best out of the worst. And that's why we should be grateful. That's why we need to have enough faith to have gratitude in every circumstance. Another story I think about is Paul and Silas. And so we see in, in Acts 16 that they're going through the city and uh, Paul cast this demon out of this woman and she was someone that uh, she did fortune telling, right? And so the people that were over her, they no longer could make a profit off of her. So eventually 
They are thrown into the streets. And in Acts 16, it says, The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off of them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison. And so they've been thrown into prison. These terrible things have happened to them. They've been persecuted unrightfully. And then it says in verse 25, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Here again we see that despite what we're going through, we have people that had an attitude and a mindset of gratitude. And that is the way that we need to live. And then another scripture for you. I'm trying to pack it just full of scripture because why not? 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. And we know this verse. It says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. But then after this, it says, give thanks in all circumstances. So if all those other stories are not more of a reason to do this, it's plain in the scripture here to give thanks despite what we're going through. And it says, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And then even verse 19, this is a little bit off topic, but it says, and do not quench the spirit. When we have the Holy Spirit in us, I believe that it promotes this mindset of gratitude. And I also think another way that we can live with gratitude is by prioritizing intimacy with God. You see, so many of us, we think that if we don't, that we're going to spend time with God in heaven, if, even, that we, even though we didn't spend time with him here. I think we need to make it something consistent that we're pursuing God, that we're pursuing a relationship with him. And the thing is, when we know God, when we know how good he is, how could we not be thankful? So I think when we spend that time alone, when we get in the prayer closet, when we just appreciate everything that God has provided, that's when we realize everything that we have to be grateful for. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about now, is the fact that we have been given so much in Christ. We have every good and perfect gift from our Father. So how could we not be grateful? So I think so many people say that, you know, if God would just provide in this area, he would just give me this, then I could achieve my purpose. Mm -hmm. And then I have enough to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. But we see in Ephesians 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He has given us every single spiritual blessing that we already need. There's nothing else we need from Christ. Even if he did nothing else, he has already done more than enough. He's given us every blessing that we need. So the truth is we need to just appreciate the gifts. We need to appreciate what we've been given. Because it goes on to talk about how we have an inheritance in God in Ephesians 1. We need to take this inheritance and be grateful for it and use it for the kingdom. And use it to make an impact. Because the truth is there's so much to be grateful for as Christians. Um, I was kind of just thinking of some different things that many of us as Christians, we know that we have, but maybe that we take for granted. One of them being, we have salvation, we have eternity in heaven, that we don't have to go to the other place, right? That's something to be grateful for. Another thing is we have the remission of sins. I don't know about y'all, but I have messed up so many times in my short 18 years, but we're completely free of that. And also we have this freedom found in Christ that not only are we forgiven of our sins, but we get to walk in freedom. We don't have to carry the burden. We don't have to carry that shame, that guilt that comes along with sin. We're made completely free in Christ. How many of y'all are in the freedom class right now? Yes? We're learning a lot about freedom. And I'm so excited for conference because I know there's going to be so many people that maybe haven't experienced that yet, experienced that at conference. So definitely be praying for that, just as a side note. But I don't know about y'all. I think one thing in my life is, I have experienced freedom in Christ, and I want others to do the same, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We need to be able to share that freedom that we found and say that, hey, this is what I know to be true in Christ. Let's share it with other people. But back to what we have to be grateful for. Another thing that I'm especially grateful for is the fact that we get to have a relationship with God. I think that's something that's taken for granted because in the Old Testament, it wasn't as easy as it is now. Because you see, God, he typically spoke through spiritual leaders. We see in Exodus that God typically spoke to people like Moses or someone like Joshua. And we see in Exodus 19 that God is going to meet Moses on Mount Sinai. And so he's telling Moses, hey, prepare the people, make sure that they consecrate themselves. And so we see Exodus 19, verse 10. And the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come on Mount Sinai in sight of all people. And this is what's so crazy to me. In verse 12, it says, And you shall set limits for the people all around, saying, Take care not to go up the mountain or touch the edge of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. 
everyone else besides Moses, they weren't even allowed to approach the foot of the mountain because they weren't righteous enough. They weren't worthy enough in God's eyes. But we have Christ now. He has made us righteous. He has made us worthy in the eyes of God. So we get to go up the mountain ourselves. We get to approach God. See, we don't have to just wait for Moses to come back down and bring what God has told him. We get to go up and meet him ourselves. And this approachability that we have in, in Christ is something that I am especially grateful for. You see, the fact that we can go home and get in our prayer closet, it wasn't like that in the Old Testament. And that's something that we need to take advantage of, but also have an attitude of gratefulness for. So, like I said, I'm thankful that I get to go up the mountain myself. I'm thankful that I'm made righteous in the eyes of God because of the blood of Christ. So, like I said, there truly is so much to be thankful for. I'm thankful that all of you are in here just willing to listen to some 18-year-old kid who doesn't know a lot. I don't really know why you do, but I'm, I'm thankful for it. Yeah. Um, but I, one thing I've, I've learned this week is it's always said that we need to have an attitude of gratitude, right? That's a common, common phrase we hear. And I was thinking about this, and I've, I've always thought that was true. We need to have an attitude of gratitude. It just sounds nice, you know? But I think there's a big difference in having an attitude of gratitude and then actually practicing gratitude. And see, so the definition of attitude is a settled way of thinking or feeling about something or someone. So an attitude is just a mindset that we have, right? But I think when it comes to living a lifestyle of gratitude, we need to be sure that we're not just thinking about being grateful, but that we're actually expressing it. So we need to have an expression of gratitude and not just an attitude of it. And so I love this scripture. And Luke 17, and this is the story of the ten lepers. And so Jesus, they were traveling between a city, between Samaria and Galilee. And it says, then one of them he saw, he was healed. So Jesus has healed all ten of the lepers that he came in contact with. But then he says, one he saw that he was healed, he turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? So the one person that came back was a Samaritan. And Jesus being a Jew, that speaks to even more the volume, the gratitude that it took for this man to approach the Jews, the king of the Jews. And so he says, and then he said to him, rise and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. So he points out the fact that there was this one that came back and expressed gratitude, right? But that's what really spoke to me this week fact that he turned back and expressed it you see the other nine i'm sure that they were probably thankful too i'm sure that they were probably grateful that they had been cleansed that their bodies were healed and that they weren't just outcasts in their lives anymore because you see people with lepers and the in the biblical days it, it was terrible i mean you were just banished away it's unthinkable we think covid was bad because we were locked up these people were completely shunned they were the pariahs of their culture but here we see that it was the one that Jesus noticed that expressed it. I'm sure that the other nine were grateful. I'm sure that they had an attitude of gratitude. I'm sure they had thoughts of, wow, this is awesome. Thank you so much. But it was the fact that they went back to Jesus, the one, and he expressed his gratitude. And I had this thought this week, what is the point of having gratitude and not expressing it? Then just not having gratitude at all. It's like saying that you love your spouse in your head and thinking that you love them, but then never telling them you love them never doing anything to show that you love them, then is, do you really love them then? I think about the book of James where he talks about faith without works is dead. You can have all the faith in the world, but if it doesn't turn into action, what's it worth? And I think that needs to be our mindset with gratitude. What's it worth if we think all the most grateful thoughts, but we never express it? We never express it before God. We never get in the secret place and just thank him for everything he's provided. I think that is the mindset that we need to have and I don't know about y'all, but I want to be like the one. I want to be like the one that was willing to express their gratitude. That didn't just think these thoughts and take their blessing and go on about their way, but that turns back and thanks God. I think about, um, you know, if you've ever given someone a gift, I really appreciate it when they express their gratitude. How many of you have kids or grandkids in here? Yeah? So say you have multiple kids or grandkids, raise your hand again. Okay. Do they all express gratitude in the exact same way? 
I think there's probably some that express more gratitude. There's probably some that you give a gift to on Christmas and they say, oh, thank you. And then there's that one kid that just goes insane. He expresses his gratitude. Like my little brother, his birthday was a few weeks ago and me and Chloe had got him a few little things, just like put a bag together and he gets to his basketball cards and he just goes insane. Like absolutely insane. He, was, he said, thank you so much. And he came up and he hugged both of our necks and that made me feel so good because he expressed his gratitude. He didn't just think in his head, oh my goodness, I'm so thankful Jackson got there for me. No, he came up and he expressed it. And so I think about when we're giving gifts, I appreciate it when someone shows that they're thankful. And I think God feels the same way, right? I think he loves it when we appreciate everything he's given us. And I think a lot of times it just takes us asking God, God, remind me of what you've given me. That's one thing I did this week. I said, God, just remind me. Remind me of everything you provided because I can't remember it all. I can never thank God enough. But what I can do is say, God, just bring those things to my mind. Help me renew my mind in you, Lord. So, like I said, let's not just have gratitude and think it in our head, but let's make sure that we're expressing it too. I think also we need to make sure that we're having gratitude with people in our lives. Not just God. We need to make sure that the people that are closest to us are getting our appreciation as well. I think so often we just we take people for granted right or sometimes it's the closest people in our lives and I was thinking this week like I said just everything that I have to be grateful for and I was reminded of you know a few years ago um, before I came to this church I actually grew up in Church of the Highlands so I went to Highlands for 10 years from the age of five until about 15 and then COVID hit and we didn't go then but even before COVID hit um, my dad had expressed some feelings that he was thinking about moving our family elsewhere and I was completely against it. I just was because I had been established there. I had friends. I was very involved in these things called city groups. Those were the first places that I, get, I got to speak and just share my heart with other students. And I really thought that that was going to be my path into ministry. I knew that I was called and I thought, I'm going to stick with this and go into Highlands College and do all these things. And so when my dad talked about leaving Church of the Highlands, I was completely against it. And I think that they still do a lot of things great, but for whatever reason, the Holy Spirit impressed on my father that we should be elsewhere. And so I really had to have this understanding that God isn't going to speak to me about what's best for our family. He's going to speak to my father. He's going to speak to my dad because he's the head of my household. And I'm so thankful that I did realize that because we ended up coming here after COVID. And it has been so much better for me, especially going to ministry. Because although I think Highlands has a lot of things great, I never would have been able to meet my pastor. I never would have been able to be discipled and build relationships with people like the great Pastor Austin back here, you know? <laughs> but here, I've had opportunities. Here, I've been able to grow. Here, I've been able to walk into my calling. And I'm so thankful that my, my father was sensitive to God speaking to him. I'm thankful that God impressed it upon my dad's heart. But I'm thankful that my dad was sensitive too. The truth is that God does so many things like that that seem insignificant or that don't make sense in the moment. But so often he's setting us up for our success. And I believe that's what he does in so many ways. But I even told my dad this week, I said, man, I am just so thankful that you made that decision. I know it was a tough decision because we were established. We had been at this place for a decade. But I'm thankful that you had the boldness to make that decision because it's been such a benefit to me. And I think the truth is when we tell people things like that, when we remind ourselves of the things that people have done in our lives, being appreciated adds value, right? Mm -hmm. When you appreciate someone, it adds value to their life, and we all want to feel valued. Mm -hmm. And one thing I think we need to do is make sure that the people that are closest to us feel valued too. Mm -hmm. Because so often we can just, oh, our parents are supposed to provide for us. Oh, my spouse is supposed to do that. But we need to take those things and say, man, I am thankful that God put this person in my life, but I'm thankful that they are willing by the Holy Spirit to perform these things for me. Because the truth is, we need help. We need other people around us. Because ultimately, all of our gratitude should go back to God because he's the one that places these individuals in our lives. But we need to make sure that we are prioritizing giving them appreciation too. And so, with that said, there's so many reasons to be grateful, right? We have everything we need in Christ. We have great people in our lives that have provided for us. But even though it's very easy to talk about being grateful, it's a lot harder to actually do that. 
And I think there's so many reasons that people avoid having a lifestyle of gratitude. Um, I think one of the biggest ones is we see being grateful and expressing how we feel as weakness sometimes. Mm -hmm. We see, because it's us telling people, I needed your help. And there's a lot of people that don't, they don't have enough vulnerability to say, I needed someone else in my life. But the truth is, we all need people. Mm -hmm. We all need people to help us. And we all need God's presence in our lives too. And I think another reason why we don't always express gratitude is because we have this entitlement. Um, so often we think that we deserve everything that's being given to us. But what I see in the scripture, especially with Paul, is that he has this contentment. He's not entitled for more. He always is content with what he had. And so there's a scripture that is extremely well known. is Philippians 4, 13. This is the one that all of the football players put on their face and eye black. All of the athletes say they're going to use the scripture to go and make 100 tackles. Um, but verse 12, right before this, right? Right before Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He says in verse 12, I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundant to need. I can do all things in Christ that strengthens me. You see, before this, he says, I know how to, in every circumstance, to just be content. That's why he can do everything in Christ. That's why he can achieve every goal. That's why, no matter what life throws at him, he has this gratefulness for what he has. Whether he has plenty or whether he has little, whether he's hunger or whether he's not. He has this contentment, and I think that's what a lot of us need to have in our lives. Because so often we think that we deserve everything. We just need more. We live in a society and a world that tells us to consistently just get more, right? It's always about just being more successful, getting more money, having more followers, having the nicest car. But I think there's a lot to be said for just being content with what we have and grateful. I don't know about y'all, but I think some of the most joyful, joyful and happy people in life are the ones that are the most content. We see people that have everything, right? They have all the cars, and or maybe they're a famous actor. They have everything that most people think they want, and they end up with thoughts of suicide, mm -hmm. or they end up with depression. And it's like, how does that make sense? Truth is, it doesn't. And we see people in Africa that have absolutely nothing, and there's pictures of them just smiling, right? They're just content. And I think that's what we need to try to implement in our own lives. So the contentment is what we all need because we live in a society that teaches the exact opposite. The truth is we need to be content with what we have instead of entitled for what we don't. And the last thing I really want to talk about just centering on here today is having a lifestyle of gratitude provides so many benefits. Like I said, when you just have this gratefulness in every circumstance, it makes us just more joyful. It makes us a joyful people when we're grateful for what we have. And also I think living this way is such a great tool for evangelism. When you have this gratitude, despite what you're going through, people will take notice. When the walls are caving in, when it doesn't make sense to be grateful, and you still are, people see that. Again, I think of Paul and Silas when they're in prison. I'm going to read this verse again. It's Acts 16, verse 25. It says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. The prisoners took notice of the fact that they're singing in prison and singing in the middle of the night. They must have been thinking, what are they doing? That doesn't make sense. They're in prison. They were just beaten in the streets, and now they're here, and they're singing praises to God. It doesn't make sense to the world. But Jesus tells us that although we're in this world, we're not supposed to be of it, right? And so there's so many things that we as Christians are going to have to do to set ourselves apart. What's the difference in me and a non-believer if... Every, if the same thing happens to me and them, and we, and we react the same way, then there's no difference. If we're going to be a light, if we're going to be good salt, if we're going to be people of Christ that are good ambassadors, we need to live a lifestyle that's different. And I think one way we can do that is having gratitude despite circumstance. And we see this again with Paul and Silas. I think this is a great example. But the truth is, we need to live a life in such a manner that it requires an explanation. I don't know where I heard that, but I heard someone say that, and I was like, wow, that makes sense. We need to live in a way where people are like, why are they happy? 
why are they still grateful? Why are they still positive? And when they do that, when people take notice of that, that's an opportunity for us to say, this is why. I have been given so much in Christ. I've been given every good and perfect gift like it talks about in Ephesians. And this is why I get to live this way. This is why I have this mindset. And so I think this is something that we continue, that we need to continue to renew our minds in and ask God to speak to us and ask him to say, hey, ask him to remind us of everything that we have to be grateful for. So there's a song um, and it's called Gratitude. And this is one of my favorite songs and it's by Brandon Lake, he's a popular Christian artist. And the, the lyrics of this song, I was really reading them through for the first time this week. I never really just thought about what these lyrics meant. And so he starts off this song and he says, all my words fall short, I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? So he takes notice of the fact that there's been so much given to us. There's no way we could truly express all of it. There's no way that I could, in my entire lifetime, give God enough gratitude that he deserves. But then he goes on and says, so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. That's his response. There's no way that I could actually give you the gratitude that I deserve, but I throw up my hands. Nonetheless, I give you the praise again and again. I kneel before you and give you my gratitude. That's the mindset that all of us need to have. That even though we can never give God enough, we would commit to praising him and thanking him again and again and again. So just to close here, I want to kind of summarize everything. Um, living a lifestyle of gratitude is something that's not easy, right? There's a lot of things that are heart struggles, that are heart blockages, that I think keep us from living with gratitude. Mm -hmm. One thing we've talked about um, in freedom is the heart blockages. And I think when we have these heart blockages, one of the biggest ones being rejection. That was the big one for me. Um, it's impossible to live gratitude when we're centered in on our problems. And I think if we can pursue int intimacy with God and realize how good he is and realize the gifts that he's given us, then we get free from those blockages and we can instead be appreciating him and just thankful for the joy that he puts in our lives through the gifts that he's given us. So like I said, we live a lifestyle of gratitude despite what we're going through. Just like Paul, just like Joseph in the Bible, just like Daniel, just like Job, we need to prioritize thanking him despite what is happening presently. And then also, we have to understand that there is so much to be grateful for. We've been given every good and perfect gift, so why not express our gratitude? And then also, it's not just about having an attitude of gratitude. It's about expressing it as well. What's it worth if we have all the gratitude in the world, but we never tell anybody? We never tell God and thank him. Mm -hmm. And then also, we need to make sure that we're prioritizing thanking people in our lives and expressing our gratitude for them as well. And then we need to take hold of the blockages that we have in our hearts that keep us from having gratitude. And then we also need to just appreciate and accept the benefits of living this way. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to close in prayer real quick. And Pastor Austin, come up, I guess, give us a few announcements and we'll be dismissed. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you again for this opportunity just to come before your people today and, and share what I believe you've spoken to my heart. Lord, I pray that it was beneficial tonight. And God, I ask that you would just encourage and lead us each to live a lifestyle that is defined by gratitude. God, I pray that, Lord, you would show us what you have given us, Lord, and help us to live a lifestyle that is thanking you in every circumstance. Lord, I pray that we would model what Paul and Silas did in the prison, Lord, that despite what we're going through, Lord, that we could just praise you and give you thanks above everything else. Lord, I pray that as we do this, Lord, that it would bring life change in our lives. Lord, that no matter what the life the world throws at us, Lord, that we could live for you. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.